Hi, this is Marie. Hey, I'm showing you how to make this striped bag in this tutorial. Uh, I had a, um, a lady ask me if I could show uh, directions on how to make it um, because it's lined with fabric and, it, and the directions are a little bit tricky. So, uh, so she said, hey, can you make a tutorial for me? And I was like, sure. So I'm finally here with the tutorial. I'm super excited about it. It turned out really cute. I love it. I lined it with this strawberry fabric. It's called The Striped Bag by Perot Yarns. And I'll go ahead and link it down below in the notes, the, um, the translation of it. The original pattern is in another language. And um, then another lady translated it. And it's kind of like charts um, with not a lot of instructions. Okay, let's get started. So I picked out uh, five colors of yarn, of worsted weight yarn that I had in my stash. And I picked out two Softly Baby Ice Yarns. And then I picked out three other colors, and these are all worsted. Um, two different grays and a purple in Ice Yarn's favorite. So I ended up using partial skeins of all of the colors except the main color uh, which I used one and a half skeins. So these are 100 gram, there's the stats on it, but 100 gram, I think it said um, 210 meters. So yeah, of worsted. And because I used the dark gray in more of the pattern, I used one and a half skeins of that. So if you're using scraps, just take account for whatever your main color is. If you're going to be using it like this, um, you know, with alternating, mostly having a main color, then you'll need uh, a skein and a half or two skeins of the, the main color. All right, and so, and then you would need a pair of these little handles and I got them on Amazon. I'll try to go ahead and link those down below also. And I used a size G hook. I did sew on the sewing machine one part of the lining, which is the center of the lining where um, I wanted to make it so that the strawberries, because my print was directional, were going the right direction on this side and on this side. So you don't need a sewing machine especially if you pick out um, a fabric that is not directional. So, and you don't even if it is, but you could have um, definitely do that part by hand as well. So let's get started. I'm going to be using these yarns from um, my stash. These first two yarns are Softly Baby. This is the light pink, the pink, these three are favorite. This is gray, lilac, and dark gray. I have um, two handles for the bag that we'll be needing and then some fabric that I purchased um, that I had in my stash that I thought would be coordinating for the lining of the bag. We're going to start with a size G hook and I have a tape measure and just some notions in case we need them. I'm going to go ahead and set these aside and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with the gray yarn and I'm going to start by making a magic loop. You can go ahead and make a magic loop however you'd like. I just do this. I just make a loop and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three, and then I'm going to do a double crochet. And that first chain three stands for the first double crochet in this first set of three. And then I'll do chain two. And then I'll do another um, set of three double crochets. and then chain two, and then three double crochets. Oops. 
and then I'm going to pull my yarn on my magic circle just to give it some structure so I can do that last set of uh, double crochets. So I'm going to do two more chains and then three double crochets. Oops. And two chains. So I'll go ahead and tighten this up. And I'm going to go ahead and go into that the top of that third chain on that original set of three chains. I'll go ahead and snug this in. So there is my first square, the first round in the pattern. I'll go ahead and flip this over. And then do three chains. And then a double crochet. And so basically we're going to just be making another double crochet and we're making a granny square, like a giant scrappy granny square. And then we'll do on this round, we're going to just do a one chain in between the ones on the side. And so you'll see that we just do the two chains in the corners. So we'll do a double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and then two chains here in the corner, double crochet, and then another set of double crochets. So this is what our square is looking like. We'll do one chain in the center, and then we'll do another corner of three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets. Chain one, and we're going to do another corner over here. Two chains. Three double crochets, chain one, and then we're going into our last, this is just the center yarn, we'll go ahead and weave that in in a little bit, but we're doing our last set of three double crochets over here. and then chain two, and then we're going to um, slip stitch into that top. So there is our second round. So we'll just continue on making this giant granny square and using all of our different colored yarns. So this um, particular pattern, which you'll find um, linked below, it is, it is more of a graph or a chart uh, than written instructions. So we're making a giant granny square and then every two rounds we're doing different colors. So um, I will continue on um, with another color. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the next color that I'd like to use. I'm going to snip my yarn and I will pick this one. I'm going to go ahead and attach it. And then flip my square over. Do three chains. And we'll weave those in ends in later. I'm going to do a double crochet 
and another double crochet. And so there's my first um, set of three double crochets. I'm going to do a chain one, do three double crochets in the center. Chain one. Oops. I'm going to do a corner in this next stitch. So I do double crochet, double crochet. So three double crochets, chain two, just like we were doing before. Three double crochets. Chain one, three double crochets, chain one. And so as we're doing this pattern, you'll notice that we're doing just the chain ones in between here, in between the two center ones. And then we'll just do the chain twos in the corners of our square. So we're going to do another corner right now. We're doing the three double crochets. Chain two. yarn there. Okay, so then we have another corner done with the three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. We do the chain one, three double crochets in the center square hole. Chain one, and then we're back to doing another corner over here. Doing our three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and we'll do a chain one, and then we do our three double crochets. And then chain one, and then three double crochets. And so I'm kind of covering up the last um, yarn that I tied in. And then I'll do two double or two chains, excuse me, and then slip stitch into the top of this. Um, third, I'm just slip stitching into the top of that one. Okay, and so there's our third row. And the pattern then calls for another round of the same color. And you can use whatever colors you like. So I'm going to do the three chains, just like we did before. Two more double crochets. Oops, chain one, so when we're doing chain one in between these and only doing the chain twos in the corner as we did before.
Okay, so we're back into um, our first corner of where we started this. And I'm going to go ahead, I did my chain one. I'm going to do my last three double crochets. Chain two, slip stitch to the top, into the top of that first chain three. Okay, and so this is what it's looking like so far. We'll go ahead and weave in these ends and clean it up um, as we go, or we could do it later. So I'm going to go ahead and change colors again. I think I'm going to go back to this. So I went ahead and tied that on. I'm going to do three chains. I'm going to crochet over that little end. Make two more double crochets. Chain one. And basically, we'll just be continuing on in this pattern, changing uh, yarn colors as we uh, would like until um, the square uh, reaches approximately 24.8 inches um, in square. So that's the size fabric that, um, that this calls for. It says that we should be getting like 30 rounds. Um, 30 of these rows and this is these are four rows I'm on the fifth row right now so um, depending upon what size yarn you're using um, I'm going to go ahead and keep going until um, mine measures approximately 24 inches square and then we'll check back in okay so I'm back and I have put another two rows on and I'm, I've decided I want to weave in my ends, so I'm just looking at the side that the ends are all, they all happen to be on. And I'm just going ahead and weaving them in so I don't have so many to do at the end. So I'm just kind of weaving them back and forth. Okay. So I'm just going to continue doing that with all of these ends. This is my current uh, loop that I'm working off of. I just took the hook off of it. But I'll go ahead and weave all these ends in and then I will um, continue on with my next color, which I believe will be this dark gray again. I'm going to keep alternating the dark gray with all of the other colors that I have, the light gray, the purple. So I will meet back up with you when I get a little further along. Okay, so I thought I would check back in with you. I have all my ends woven. I made another pass, another round with the dark gray. And I have Um, I just slip stitched to join that round. I'm going to go ahead and just check in with you that we're just doing the same thing, that we're chain three. We're turning our square. We're doing two more double crochets. 
do one chain and then three double crochets in each of the holes um, from the previous round. We're doing three double crochets with one chain in between each. So one chain, three double crochets. And then at the corners, we're going to do the, the we're going to continue on with the two chains in each corner. So, so there's one chain in between each of these. And then we have the two chains in the corner and each uh, corner has uh, two sets of double crochets, just like that. So I am just going to continue on changing, oops, continue on just changing colors every two rows. And then again, you can use whatever scraps you have, however you like. But I will catch up with you when I get to the end of this row. So that's how it's looking. I will check back in with you when I get to the end of the round. Okay, so I'm back at this, um, the end of this um, row. And I'm going to go ahead and do my last three double crochets. Chain two, and then slip stitch to join in the corner, which is in the top of this first chain three of the round. Okay, and so this is how it looks so far. I'm just going to continue on um, alternating colors and making my square to be approximately 24.8 <laughs> inches, and I'll meet up with you when I get to that. Okay, so now I am back and I'm at... I'm, I'm just under 24 inches from here to here. And it said um, 30 rounds, and I'm at 26, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, I'm at 26. And so um, I, and, and it did say the measurement was approximately um, 24.8 inch square for the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more rounds so I can get closer to that size piece of fabric that I'll be putting on the inside. So. I am going to do one more round. I have, by the way, um, gotten into my second ball of this gray color. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, one more round of the next color, which is the gray, the light gray. And then I will catch back up with you. Okay, so I am at my finished square size that I've determined that I would like to use. And basically it is um, the pattern called for the fabric piece to be 24.8 inch square. I got as close to that and it also called for um, 30 rows starting with the center row right here, this little four row all the way up, and I just counted that by counting one, two, three, four, like that. And I have 28 rows, which I've used to get close to that size measurement. I am a little bit over in that size measurement, so um, I also was looking at the pattern as it is just basically a chart with very few directions. Um, it said 
60 centimeters and mine is 64 centimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this. This is what I've decided um, that I think will be correct, you know, for, for what I'm trying to do. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to go ahead and cut the yarn, which I don't necessarily have to do, but I would like to do it for the next step. I think I could have kept that in, but I want to do the sewing first. So, so I want to sew the lining in, and I'm, I've chosen this um, strawberry fabric to line the bag with. And what I would like to do is um, cut myself a square that is just with with the um, the turned under quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a square and then fold a seam allowance, um, you know, over double, like you like so. And I'm going to go ahead and iron that and I'll come back with it. I've decided because it's directional, because my strawberries are going up and down for the most part, there's a few that there's like one right there or one right here that goes upside down. I've decided that I'm going to take two strips of the fabric going the same direction, cut it, and then seam it together on the bottom so that the strawberries are going the right direction on this side and they're going the right direction on this side on the bag. So I um, am going to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna measure what size I'm going to need for inside of my bag. I'm going to do it about the same size as my, um, oh, and I have a salvage. I'll be taking into account that I'm going to be cutting off that salvage right there. But I would like it to be just a little bit larger than my piece because when I turn it under, then I can um, turn it under twice and it will be inside of the size. So, so yeah. I think that I'll be doing just a little bit larger than the size of my crocheted item. And I'm going to be folding it in half. I think this will probably be the easiest way to determine the size. I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to lay it out even. I'll take a measurement. So it's 25 inches, just a little bit long, a little bit more, 25 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces of that fabric with leaving a, a, self, or a, a sewing seam on the bottom right here because I'm going to go ahead and sew it together so that I have my strawberries facing the right direction on both sides. So I'll go ahead and cut two pieces of fabric that size as so, one like this, and then a second one the same way, and then I'll flip it, and I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so I have laid it out like this. Let me back up a little. So Okay, so I have laid it out like this, so I can kind of see it has um, what I'm going to call my seam allowance on the top. This is just a guesstimate so that when I cut it apart and I make a seam that I'll have enough to sew it together and have it be about the same size that I need. And then so what I'm going to do is make a cut. Oops. What I'm going to do is make a cut along this side and along this side and then of course cut the salvage off and then I will be slicing across the top and then I will be making a seam right there so I'm gonna go ahead and do some cutting 
I just wanted to show you the layout of the fabric for directional. Now, if you weren't doing directional or if you didn't even care if your strawberries were upside down on one side of your bag, you could totally just cut out this piece and use it as is without this extra seam allowance on the top. So this is just me thinking I might like the strawberries to be the right direction on both sides of my bag when I open it. And just in case you were wondering what fabric the strawberry fabric is, it, it appears to be uh, Heather Ross Wyndham Fabrics uh, 20th Anniversary Edition and there is the style number. I'm not sure if you can still find this or if it's discontinued, um, but there it is. Okay, so now we're back. We're at the ironing board. And what I've done is I've cut the two pieces and I've pressed them. So they're the same exact size. And my plan is I'm going to go ahead and put them... So this one has the strawberries with the bottom facing down. And this one has it the same exact way. What my plan is, is to go ahead and put them face um, right sides together. And then what I'm going to do is create a seam across the bottom. And then when I open it up to put it in the bag, the strawberries will be pointing down on both sides. Okay, I'm over at my sewing machine and I just have the standard straight stitch on and I'm going to go ahead and do a quarter inch seam allowance. And so I have my fabric like this just so that the strawberries are both facing down on both sides with right sides together. And I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. And you can go ahead and pin this if you'd like. But. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and cut my thread. And there's my seam. And I'm going to go back to the ironing board and iron it. Now I'm back over here and I'm going to be folding in the seam allowance, ironing it, and then folding it a second time. And then I will get back with you. Okay, so now we're back at the table. And so we have, this is our center seam, it's pressed out. Then we have all of our edges just um, that with the seam allowances ironed and ironed a second time. And what I think that I will do on this particular one, because the fabric is a different color, the lining fabric is a different color than my fabric on my bag, is I will um, go ahead and hand sew this piece of fabric on the inside of my bag and with a little whip stitch around um, and I'll show you that process. But you can, um, on my last bag that I made like this, I had the same color fabric on the lining bag or a similar one uh, on the lining of the bag as on the, um, the yarn. And so I was able to zigzag it um, with my sewing machine, which made it much quicker and you couldn't even see it through the yarn. So if you choose a lining that's the same color fabric, as your last um, row on your bag, then you can go ahead and zigzag, if, if you have a sewing machine, around the edge and sew it on there with a the sewing machine. So I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand, but I will show you what it turns out like. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out my blanket, or my blanket, my bag. I'm going to go ahead and lay out my bag, just like this. Get rid of any little strings or anything and then 
I am going to take my strawberry fabric and lay it on top. And so it should be slightly smaller than the crocheted bag outside. So I will even that up and then I'll go ahead and hand stitch it just like right along here. Oops. I'll go ahead and hand stitch it right along here. And then once I get it all stitched all the way around, oops, <laughs> let me go ahead and trim that. Once I get it hand stitched all the way around, I will come back and join you for the next part. So after this, we'll be crocheting some more. But um, I found that um, in looking at not what the pattern says, but what other people have said who have made this, they found that this was easier to go ahead and sew the uh, fabric on the, the lining fabric on the bag at this point. So we'll go ahead and do that this time and see how that comes out. So I'll meet you back here when I'm done hand sewing this lining in the bag. Okay, so now I am just hand stitching right along this edge. This is the turned under fabric and that's how it's looking. So on the other side you won't be able to see on the other side you won't be able to see the stitches. It'll just be a lining on the inside of the bag. So I will catch back up with you when I finish doing this uh, whip stitch all the way around the lining. Okay, so we're back and I have done a whip stitch. Uh, I've folded the fabric edge um, with a 0.6 inch seam allowance and I've just hand whip stitched it onto the square of crochet. So here we are. I still have the one end from that last row on there. So we're going to get started with the next, the next portion of this. Here, I'll show you what it looks like at this point. So it looks like this. I've got, you know, the seam in the middle with the strawberries on both sides so that I have strawberries facing the, the correct direction on each side. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some more crochet. Okay, so in reading the pattern, it says to work um, 10 rows of single crochet, um, 61 stitches wide along the side of the body. So we're going to do um, 61 stitches of single crochet on this side and then on this side, the opposite side, and then on the mouth side, which is the side where the handles are going to go. And because of the directional print of the fabric of the strawberries, I want the handle to be here and to be here so that when I open it, I can see the strawberries right side up on both sides. So these will be the mouth side, this side, and then these will be the sides. So this is the mouth and the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, the crochet, the single crochet. I'm going to start it along the sides of the body, which it says to do 61 stitches along this side. So I'm going to I think that I'm going to do the dark color to do my handle or the top of my bag. Okay, so the plan is to put 61 stitches on this whole side, 61 single crochets. And I, with some doing some quick math, I decided that I need to put two um, single crochets in each um, little cluster to get that, um, that amount of stitches across the top of it. And so it, it basically is, it will be bringing in 
um, the sides of the bag, tightening them up a little. And so in order to do that, I'm going to skip um, every other stitch and just single crochet in that. So I have skipped that one. So I'm going to skip this one, single crochet in this one. Skip this one, single crochet in here. So I will continue to do that. Skip, single crochet. And so basically it's just pulling it in and tightening up the sides of the bag. Skip, single crochet. Skip. Oh, I'm skipping that one, single crochet. Yeah, so basically when I look at the little grouping of three, I'm going to do the single crochet in this one and in this one, and then go on to the next one, do this one and this one. So I'm doing it in like the first and the third one, basically, of each little group. Okay, so that's how it's looking so far. Okay, so it's looking like this. I will catch up with you when I get to the end of the row. Okay, I've come to the end of this first row of doing the side um, stitches. I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and continue to do single crochets in each one. And we're doing 10 rows of single crochets on each side. So I'm going to do this to this first side of the bag. Okay, so this is how it's looking. There we go. So I'll go ahead and um, finish up my 10 rows and meet back up with you. Okay, we're back. We have our 10 single crochet, um, 10 rows of single crochet that I've worked. And the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and snip the yarn. Oh, you know what? I'm going to leave like a long, long tail on it. Okay, that's probably fine. And then we're going to... thread a tapestry needle. I am going to, here's the loop on the end. I'm going to just go through the loop with the uh, tail, tighten it up. And then it says um, to take the fold in half towards the inside of the bag on the wrong side. <clears throat> Sew so the stitches of the the last row to the stitches of the first row with a whip stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and fold it over like this and then sew along here. Let's see. I think I'll just move it like this. Let's see. So that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew along here and whip stitch it together. Oops. 
So I'm going to go along here and whip stitch it together. Okay, I will meet back up with you when I'm done. So I'll just keep going along this whole side. Okay, so we're back and I have went ahead and done the whip stitch all the way along um, this, the, the first row to the last. So that's how it looks. And so now we'll be doing the same thing on the other side of the bag. So opposite this side, we're going to do that same thing. I'm going to go ahead and do the single crochets, the 10 rows, and sew it just like we just did. And then when I'm done with that, I will meet back up with you for the mouth of the bag. Okay, so we are back and I have both of the sides done that looks like this. I have finished them, done the sewing, woven the end, and so both of them look like that on either one of the sides. And now I have the mouth of the bag, which is what they're calling either side of the top of the bag. So this is called the mouth. And so what the direction said is that we need to do uh, 41 stitches across the, the um, 41 uh, single crochets across the top of the bag. And so what I did was I just folded the bag in half and put a little marker right here. And then I folded the halves in half. I just did the first one so I could kind of see where I was at. So then I folded the half in half and put another marker there. And basically I need to do 10 uh, single crochets in each section. So I just thought I would do it in the beginning um, so I could show you how I kind of figured out how I, where I could do the the 10 stitches or how many stitches needed to be spread over how many uh, stitches on the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the same color, just doing a slip knot. And in the directions, it shows that you start in the middle of in the middle of this um, edging. That's where your first one is. So I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet in there. And I'm going to hold that tail back here. So I'm going to do my 10. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six little. So I will do, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's what I came up with. It looks like maybe one more, I'll do eleven to kind of get up there. So I'm going to continue on um, doing 10 more in this next section because I do have 41 total that I can do. So I will go ahead and do the rest of them across the mouth of the uh, mouth side of the bag and I will catch up with you. Okay, so there is a diagram um, if you needed help with that, but um, I decided to just try to put the 41 stitches evenly amongst my um, side of the bag. So this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and do, it wants 
um, 10 rows again of the single crochet back and forth along here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with that and then show you what it looks like when I get the 10 rows of the single crochet. And then I'll just do like a chain one and continue on doing single crochets in each one. So like this. So that's just just how we did on the sides of the bag, but this is the mouth of the bag. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will catch back up with you when I get um, my 10 rows. Okay, so I'm just checking in with you. This is how it's looking so far. Um, I am just doing my 10 rows my 10 rows of my single crochet along the edge and that's how it's looking so far. I love it. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. It's going to be so cute. Can you, I can kind of see how it's starting to come together. And then once this gets long enough, we'll wrap it around the handle and sew it. So I will be back. Okay, so now I'm back and I have done the 10 rows and actually um, if at this point you think you need to do extra row depending upon the thickness of your handle I think you should so I'm going to go ahead and sew it on like this so let's see so here's what it looks like before and because you know we just did the 40 stitches it gathered it up nicely let's see there's the front of the bag and I'm going to go ahead and leave a long tail the string or the yarn and I am going to sew it sew on the handle There's the hole from my last stitch. I'm going to tighten that up. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew on my handle like this. Let's see, I'm going to turn around my bag. I think this will be a little easier to work with it like this. So you can see what I'm doing. Let's see. Put that through here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a few stitches here at the end so that I can make sure snug okay and then I'll just continue sewing the handle on Doing extra stitches as needed. Okay, I will catch back up with you when I get the handle sewed on. Okay, so I am back. And I have put the handle on. Let's see if I can go ahead and get the color to come in. Okay. I have put the handle on 
and it looks adorable. So let me show you the inside. So this is what the inside looks like. And I just went ahead and whip stitched it on all the way along here. And then I um, went ahead and, you know, made a knot and then wove in the ends and um, did extra stitches on the ends just to keep it um, sturdy. I love how it turned out. It's so cute. Okay, so I have to do the other side. So now all I need to do is I folded it in half. I put a marker on and then folded it in half again, put another marker on. I'm going to do my 10 single crochets just like I did on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and do the 41 all the way across on single crochets and the 10 rows of that and I will catch back up with you. Okay, so we're back and I've done the second um, set of 10 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and sew the second handle on and I will be back with you once I get it sewn on. And we'll wrap this thing up. So this is how it turned out, I love it. It's nicely lined and everything. So if you would like to see more of this type of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks for joining me. Bye.